In Epidemiology Part 2, we will be describing how the virus is spread throughout the world and how the U.S. has failed to control the spread of COVID-19. The outbreak began as a point source in the Hunan live animal and fish market, and the majority of cases were among market workers depicted in yellow. However, within 10 days, the disease rapidly spread person to person to those who had not been in the market, the blue bars, demonstrating early on that the virus was highly infectious. These maps document the rapid spread throughout China. Each 10-day interval documents spread outward from the city of Wuhan, where the market was located, into the entire Hubei province and progressively into the other eastern provinces. The infection quickly spread throughout the world as a consequence of Chinese citizens traveling to Europe, particularly northern Italy. And tourists infected while visiting Italy then spread the virus to New York City. Chinese also traveled to Seattle, explaining the first outbreak in the United States. As shown on this map from the Center for System Science and Engineering Johns Hopkins, as of October 17th, there have been nearly 40 million cases worldwide and over 1.1 million deaths, a death rate of 2.8%. As you can see, the U.S. continues to lead the world in the number of cases followed by India and Brazil. Why is the U.S. leading the world in COVID-19 cases? The simple answer, failure to act. To illustrate the importance of early intervention, I commissioned the famous artist and family friend, Bruno Lucchese, to draw an image of Pandora's jar. Zeus, angered by the deceptions of Prometheus, warned that a great plague to you, yourself, and to man shall be. He created Pandora, a beautiful maiden, and fashioned a jar, often mistranslated as a box, containing all the pestilence of the world. He encouraged the curious Pandora to open the jar, releasing a plague on all men. 3,000 years later, we are now experiencing such a plague in the form of COVID-19. And when politicians delay applying the tools of infection control, they are leaving Pandora's jar open, allowing the virus to spread, causing unnecessary suffering and death. These are the epidemic curves earlier in the pandemic for South Korea, China, all of the European countries, including Italy and Spain, the Scandinavian countries, Australia, and the U.S. The vertical axis is a log scale of the number of deaths per day from COVID-19. Each star represents the time which the government implemented shelter in place, that is, when they closed Pandora's jar. Look at South Korea. They implemented shelter in place, an aggressive diagnosis, case finding, and isolation after observing three deaths per day. Note the nearly flat curve for South Korea in pale blue. Also notice that the number of cases has dramatically dropped in China, the orange curve. They intervened after three to four deaths per day and after a total of 30 deaths. Italy, the black curve, on the other hand, waited until the daily death rate reached 75 per day, and they had accumulated a total of 800 deaths before ordering shelter in place. Note the steep curve as a consequence of leaving the jar open. Italy has had the highest number of deaths of any European country. Finally, note the steep curve for the U.S. in red. The U.S. did not implement a uniform policy. Some states shelter in place, others choosing not to intervene. The consequence of this approach, we have by far the largest number of active cases and deaths in the world. To make matters worse, we reopened states who chose shelter in place in early May, a less than one month duration. Now that we have had time to create programs to test and contact trace, the WHO recommends against shelter in place orders because of the devastating psychological and economic consequences of this approach. Let's look at the latest epidemiologic curves for the U.S. As you can see, the rise in cases in March and April slowed, resulting in a plateau, followed by a second rise in July. These plateaus represent mitigation, but an inability to suppress the epidemic because of the varied responses of the states. This contrasted with Europe, where each country consistently implemented shelter in place for a sufficient duration, 
followed by mask mandates, limited gather, limiting gathering and social distancing, and contact tracing bringing the new cases to low levels before cautiously and slowly opening up. The individual states in the U.S. opened up aggressively despite their failure to reduce the rate of infection, and by Memorial Day, many were behaving as though the epidemic had ended, celebrating in bars and crowding on beaches without masks. Look at the abrupt rise in cases, and the U.S. reached an all-time record for daily cases, exceeding 75,000 in one day in July. Subsequently, Increased use of masks and decreased mobility resulted in a temporary reduction in cases. However, since early September, the cases have again begun to climb, new cases being seen in the Midwestern states, where they have refused to mandate necessary infection control measures. Here is the United States map for October 17th from the Center for System Science and Engineering. As compared to the earlier maps, the entire nation is now covered in red, indicating significant numbers of cases in all states. And we have a total of 8,054,067 cases and nearly 220,000 deaths. The U.S. represents 4% of the world population, and we have 20% of the world's cases and 20% of the deaths due to COVID-19. Los Angeles now has the largest number of cases with 287,269, followed by New York City with 236,329 cases. Growth in cases dramatically decreased in New York in August and September, but as it becomes colder and people are spending more time inside, cases are now slowly rising. Miami is now third with 177,339 closely followed by Chicago, Houston, and Phoenix. And finally, Seattle, the city that in the early stages of the pandemic had the most cases, now is one of the lower cities with 224,769 cases. This map, generated by the Harvard Global Health Institute, shows the prevalence of disease by location. Red zones represent areas with over 25 cases, new cases per 100,000. Orange, 10 to 24 per 100,000. Yellow, 1 to 9 per 100,000. And green, less than 1 per 100,000. In, in the July map, you can see prevalence was higher in the southeast and southwest. But now in October, the highest prevalence is seen in the Midwest. This curve of South Dakota, with a steep increase in the number of cases, is typical of the Midwestern states. In July, Florida had the highest number of cases per capita in the U.S. at 55.1 per 100,000, but is now down to 14.1 per 100,000, moving from red to orange. Here is the epidemic curve showing daily new cases in Florida. Note the slight uptick over the last three days. Recently, the government has removed all limits on gatherings and has given permission for bars, restaurants, and sports stadiums to move to full capacity. He has also mandated face-to-face -face instruction for all schools, including our universities. We await the inevitable consequences of this overly aggressive approach. Now let's briefly look at India. Early in the pandemic, India instituted aggressive shelter-in-place measures, but this approach resulted in severe loss of income as well as starvation forcing reopening of the country. Shelter-in-place provided time to establish testing centers in COVID-19 hospitals, as well as to educate the population on the importance of wearing masks. However, crowding in the cities has led to the explosive growth of cases, and now India is second in the world when it comes to cases at 7,432,000, and third when it comes to death at 112, almost 113,000 cases. Mumbai has the most cases, over 1.5 million, followed by Andhra Pradesh with nearly 775,000 cases and New Delhi with 325,000 cases. But remember, India has four times the population of the U.S., partially explaining their high numbers. In these curves showing the number of daily new cases, note the steep rise in India with some recent flattening. There are now steep rises in Europe, as exemplified by Germany and Italy, arrows, following the opening of bars and restaurants. Europe is again reversing these openings and encouraging the wearing of masks 
avoidance of large gatherings, and maintaining social distancing. The Midwestern states have failed to act, explaining the recent steepening of the curve for the U.S. To summarize the content of this video, the epidemic began as a point source outbreak in a live animal fish market in Hunan, China. As of October 17th, worldwide, there were over 14 million cases and over 1.1 million deaths. Many countries experienced exponential epidemic curves as a result of delays in implementing infection control practices. They left Pandora's jar open. Testing, case finding, and isolation are critical for controlling spread, and many countries have now managed to control the epidemic. The United States has failed to consistently implement appropriate infection control measures, resulting in steep increases in the southern states in July and now steep growth of cases in the Midwest. The U.S., with 4% of the population, has 20% of the world's active cases and 20% of all deaths due to COVID-19. India now has the second largest number of cases.